Today we're going to make a solar powered job box so we can charge our tools while we keep them safe. This video is sponsored by Flex Seal. A job box is a large heavy duty steel toolbox where you can securely store your power tools on a construction site. Now we wanted to take it to the next level and add a solar panel and a battery system so that we can charge our battery operated power tools while they're not being used. The box is going to be made primarily out of steel and we're going to use a whole wide array of Flex Seal products products to waterproof it. The shell of the box is made out of 1 8 inch thick plate steel. Brett from Skull and Spades is handling this project and he started by just wire brushing down the steel to get off any dirt and rust. We just got these mag switch magnet clamps which are awesome for welding because they use these super strong switchable magnets to hold even the heaviest pieces of steel in place at a nice right angle while you pack in your welds. We had the steel pre-cut into sheets that were four feet by two and a half feet. Brett used an angle grinder and a cutting wheel to cut the end panels in half. Now notice that we're just tacking in the welts. We're not doing complete seams and that's just to minimize the heat buildup and prevent the steel from warping. The eighth inch thick plate is quite strong but a little bit flexible so we cut some angle steel to reinforce it from the inside. Right now the box is upside down and this angle steel is going to be used to hold the floor panel. Now we also don't want the box sitting directly on the ground so we cut some scrap pieces of tube steel to make some feet that will just hold it a little bit off of the concrete or dirt just to keep the box nice and dry. Now obviously if you wanted the box to sit up a little bit higher you could use bigger pieces of steel or you could even use lockable wheels if you wanted to be able to roll it. We're going to use expanded steel mesh for the bottoms, but we need a reinforcement bar, so Brett notched out a piece of angle to go across the middle. The reason we're using expanded steel mesh for the bottom is that this way if the tools are dirty, have sawdust on them, or occasionally leaking a little bit of cutting fluid or oil, that dirt and gunk will just fall right through. For the lid, Brett cut some additional pieces of angle, but this time he mitered the corners so he can make a frame that goes around the perimeter of the box so that we're assured a nice tight fit. Smaller magnet clamps came in handy for just holding everything secure while we tack this frame together. A single piece of plate steel is going on top of this frame so we ground the welds down flat so that the steel would lie on nice and flush. Once again, we just tacked on the plate steel with a weld about every two inches. We're going to use bullet style hinges on the back side of the lid so Brett trimmed off one of the flanges on the angle steel. These bullet hinges are super heavy duty and have a really cool look to them. Now there's no holes on them so you just weld them right to the pieces that you want to open. Seriously, these things look like cool little scuba tanks and they open and close very smoothly. Now that everything was nice and square and fit nicely, Brett went back in and filled in between the tack welds with nice continuous beads that he then ground flush with a flap disc and an angle grinder. Check it out. Opens great. Now of course we need to lock up this box so we drilled holes in a couple pieces of angle and welded them on. Now mostly this box will stay in one place on the construction sites that we're at, but occasionally you do need to move it and it weighs about 100 pounds. So we use some one inch steel pipe to make super heavy duty handles. The handles will have a pivot point so they can rotate down in case you need to put this in a truck or store it in a garage. And then they rotate up with a positive stop so that it makes for an easy carry with two people.
steel is such a great material for projects like this because it's so malleable and you can always just tack on more stuff with a welder. To power the tools, we're going to use a 100 watt solar panel from Goal Zero, and we want to leave a little bit of an air gap between it and the lid of the box, just so that heat doesn't build up underneath it. So we drilled holes through some pieces of angle steel so that we can bolt them to the frame of the solar panel. We marked the locations on the lid of the box so that we could drill holes and bolt everything together. We also had to drill a hole underneath the solar panel so that we could run the cord from the solar panel to the Goal Zero power station, which will serve as our energy storage and tool charging. The lid of the box is pretty heavy and we don't want it slamming shut on anybody's hands, so we cut a stop out of it some additional pieces of angle. This is a nifty little contraption that Brett made up on the spot out of scrap, but pneumatic supports or stops would also work really well. The box is 30 inches deep, so we thought some shelves would make the storage space more efficient. We also thought that some additional reinforcement to the flexible 1 8 inch plate would be a good idea, so we used some solid half inch square rod to make a frame that fits inside. We wanted to keep the Goal Zero charging station and batteries for the power tools up near the top and easily accessible. So we just welded in a permanent shelf about one quarter of the way across it, once again using expanded metal mesh. Job boxes like this tend to take a lot of abuse, so we wanted to go with some extra protection on the paint. So after cleaning all the steel with some acetone, we sprayed on two coats of rusty metal primer. Once the primer had fully cured, we then finished off the paint with two coats of protective enamel. Now we didn't do full seams along the inside of the box. So in order to make it a little bit more weather type, we're going to use Flex Seal Liquid in black to seal up these corners. This is a super water resistant coating and it easily applies as a liquid with a paintbrush. We just use some painter tapes just to keep the lines a little bit cleaner than they would be otherwise. Flex Seal Liquid is a fantastic product that I've used to waterproof all sorts of projects and I've always liked their commercials, particularly the one where they make a boat out of a screen door. After painting the steel supports for the solar panel, we were ready to mount it. And we needed to waterproof that hole while the cable came through. And for that, we're using Flex Paste. It's much thicker, and it was a super easy way to seal up this half inch diameter hole around this 1 8 inch diameter cable. We also tried out Flex Shot. This comes in the can almost like Cheese Whiz, and it's great for like small applications where you just need a little bit and you don't want to open up a whole tube in a caulking gun. We use this awesome product to seal around the nuts and bolts that are holding the solar panel to the lid. Now we can secure this box by running a chain through the feet and locking it down to something else heavy on the site. But we still thought adding a GPS tracker inside is a good idea. And for this, we use a piece of tech from Tracker and we use Flex Glue to glue the case for the tracker inside the box. Flex Glue is basically like a super strong construction adhesive that also has some great waterproofing abilities. Shout out to Flex Seal for sponsoring this video. I've been using the original liquid for quite some time and have always had good results and I'm so excited they're coming out with all these different applications and products. If you want to find out more information about these products, click on the link in the description box below. Now I had priced out some job boxes that were about the same size and they were all over $300. The steel for this one cost me about $160, $170 and then roughly probably another $40 to $50 of sealants, paint, and consumables. I'm going to be taking on a lot of different construction projects over the next two years and I'm probably going to need about three or four of these job boxes. So I'm considering this one a rough draft and we'll be looking to improve the next iteration. I started using the Goal Zero system when I was building the container house and about 90% of the construction electricity used came from this type of system. 
For the next version of the design, I want to focus on a more secure locking system, better supports that can hold the lid at multiple angles to really maximize the amount of solar electricity that you can generate, and coming up with a whole bunch of cool interior organization ideas. But I really like this as a proof of concept. If you have questions about the electrical capacity of the Goal Zero products, I'll put a link to their website in the description box below. They got specs for all their stuff online. This box will get used at my sister Jessie's house that she's remodeling, and I'm sure she's going to appreciate being able to store her tools and keep them charged at the same time. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Okay, bye.